So after the first purchase, we have a good the customer experience, the program, uh, the products makes it easier for them to understand uh, what the purchase will be next time. Uh, in the case of the parking spot uh, or the case with uh, Inspirado, there's a membership. Uh, in one case, it's a spot club. In another case, it's either, either a pass, uh, Inspirado pass or Inspirado club. Um, Ron, could you talk to uh, what happens with the repeat purchase purchases and what opportunities and um, um, what makes it easier for customers to book again and uh, be, stay at the parking spot the next time? <clears throat> yep. Um, so for on the digital flat platforms, obviously, uh, you know, when the members logged in, we save all of the information that they had from their previous trip. So they can make a booking very easy at their preferred, preferred facility uh, for their preferred parking type. And also uh, part of the repeat is, you know, uh, the loyalty aspect of, you know, earning points for um, parking or towards free parking that you can, you know, so the, the way that you get that is staying with us more often. Um, but, you know, the fact that everything is linked to their one account um, and we don't have multiple, even through our third party, um, uh, reservation platforms that we're integrated into, it all comes up to their one account and we've kind of aggregated everything into that um, to make it as easy as possible for the customers to enter and exit and quite frankly, rebook um, because we know what all of their preferences are because um, they told us that. Um, we also have uh, expense integrations with all the major expense providers um, to make that process very, very easy after they've stayed with us. So they just, they check out, they get their emailed receipt, and then it goes automatically to their expense provider. Um, you know, like I, I said before, we've tailored our experience to the, the loyalty members um, because that's who we know the most about. Um, and that's who, you know, is telling us about them. Um, from a reservations perspective, though, we've seen our uh, reservation rates, uh, the percentages of overall transactions close to 70%, um, which just four years ago, it was only at about 40, or I'm sorry, three years ago, it was only at about 40%. So we've gotten a, a lot of uh, traction on our digital platforms. And I think that's due to the improvements that we've made, but also, uh, you know, customers really wanting to ensure that they actually have a parking space available or that we have one available for them and knowing that they're getting their best rate by doing it online. How are you helping customers find out about the busy time? So I'm assuming Thanksgiving oh, will be a busy, busy, busy time for you. Um, and this having this the space available and booking it in advance. Do you do any active outreach to your customers or we do. helping we've them got, realize the discounts? Yeah, we've got a pretty uh, substantial email campaign that goes out to all of our uh, members or members that we have email addresses for that told us that they can that we can email them. Um, and we we do a lot of push. It's funny you bring up Thanksgiving, Alex, because that's one of the biggest pushes that we do to try and get people to, you know, reserve and book early in advance. Um, because we do have a tendency to fill up. Obviously, it's the biggest travel holiday of the year. Um, you know, it's not like the end of year holidays where they're more spread out. It's Christmas or Thanksgiving is you know consolidated into well one week. <laughs> um, but yes, we do. We use social media quite a bit um, to get that message out there. Um, and we also uh, rely on our SEO and SEM campaigns and the digital marketing uh, to bring the customers to us sooner um, and remarketing campaigns to uh, ensure that they know that by booking earlier, they're getting a better rate um, and you know can upgrade to parking types for a lower rate um, you know, instead of waiting to the last minute when we can't guarantee a space. Great. Thank you. Sam, uh, my question to you is about the difference between the club membership and Inspirado Pass. You have two subscription products. Um, can you talk about the type of experience uh, that um, is, and, and the perspective that the customers have who are members and who are uh, pass holders? Yeah, happy to. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, and, and Alex, what you're mentioning too, is we, we have two primary subscriptions in, 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 the, in the marketplace today, one called Inspirado Club and one called Inspirado Pass. And, you know, those, those offerings are, you know, slightly, uh, have, have a slightly different structure, but ultimately yield, 
and, and provide access to this the same uh, level of service as well as accommodations within the portfolio. So the you know the kind of the, the way to think about it is is our our club offering is 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 something that you know is a is, is geared towards uh, travelers that that may be more kind of episodic in nature in the way they travel. So they they may be on a slightly more regimented schedule, whether that's you know, they have a family and they're typically traveling during times when folks with tra families travel, whether it's, you know, during Thanksgiving, as, you know, Ron, you were mentioning earlier, is, um, you know, over the holiday break or could be even sometime in spring break and in the summer and things like that. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, as, as a subscriber in that, in that, and in that offering, you're typically, you know, traveling, you know, during those times. And as a result of that, you know, that, that subscription, you're, you're, you know, you're paying for the travel as you book it. And so, um, you know, what we try and do is, is it, for that offering is, is have the, the technology um, complement the level of service that you're getting and that, that our, our very talented customer service teams, the dedicated service teams that you have as a subscriber, you know, get to know who you are and where you like to go and, you know, the types of things that you're going to be interested in. And so we're, we're constantly, you know, reaching out and making sure you're, you know, you as a subscriber aware of, of, you know, what might be coming up if, you know, you had a trip booked next or last spring, maybe it's time to book that trip again. And, you know, we meet, we meet you kind of in, 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 in where you're most comfortable. If it's something that you just want to do on your own and you want that, you know, self-serve experience, you can do that on our website, you can do it on our app, and you can do that all by your, all on your own. Um, or you could be somebody that says, you know, Hey, that sounds good to me. Can you just book that for me? And we can provide that, that full service. Um, on the past side, it's, it's very similar in terms of the, the service com uh, component paired with, you know, that complementary technology, um, set of tools that we provide our subscribers. Um, but it, it with the way pass it works a little bit differently. Um, it's got a slightly higher price point in terms of the subscription. But then the travel is all you know included, so no you know the night the rates, taxes, and fees are, are part of the subscription. So you're as you're as you're booking trips, you're not necessarily paying for those trips. You're booking the trips, you're taking them, and then after that, you're, you're booking another trip essentially. So um, you know we see folks and with that offering to to be a little bit more on the flexible side of things with their schedule. They might be taking more trips. They might be we, we see you know shorter booking windows um, with with that type of offering. Um, and, and we find, you know, those customers have a, uh, you know, some slightly different needs as it relates to our, our club uh, customers. All, all have a very similar profile and sort of the, the expectations that they have. But in terms of sort of that scheduling and then sort of the booking window, it's a little different. So we see a lot of the, those trips being done, you know, fully self-service in terms of the booking. But again, the, you know, just to underscore the service component is really where, you know, the technology and that service meet to, to kind of provide that um, those offerings so that, you know, our repeat customers have, you know, the, the, the tools at their disposal to make those decisions quickly and easily. This is great. Would you say that for uh, the past holders, the buying decision really becomes what is my next trip versus um, having to curate a specific option and plan, plan ahead. How is the mindset um, different in the, in the purchasing process? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I, you know, with, with pass, you know, just by the very nature of when you, when you book a trip, if you're a pass subscriber, you know, you're, you're not necessarily, you know, faced with as, as much of a buying, you know, decision as you would be when you book on the club side, or even, you know, if you're just booking, you know, if you're not an Inspirato member, you're booking like, you know, James mentioned a couple times on Airbnb or some of the other marketplaces, like, you know, when you're, when you're faced with those decisions, you want to make sure you have as much information at your, at your disposal. On, on the past side, they're, they're still thinking through, you know, our subscribers are very much value focused, right? So yeah, they may not be paying for that, that trip as they're booking it, but, you know, I, I like, I'm sure most folks on this, on this, um, in this event would think about, I mean, you're still link, thinking about it in terms of value. Like, well, if I have a subscription, well, you know, what am I, what am I getting for this subscription? What am I booking? So you're kind of doing that, that math, if you will, a little bit, or at least doing some, some, some type of comparison. So um, we want to make sure that, you know, it's, as, it's easy, as, as easy and as seamless as possible to book. 
Um, but you're, you're, you're right in that there's a, there is a slightly different mindset because you could, you could book that trip. And if then ultimately on the past side, oh, you need to make a change and that trip doesn't work, you can cancel that trip. Right. And you're, you're not necessarily losing out on, on anything per se. So there, there's more flexibility. There's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, I guess transactions we see from like a booking and then making a rebooking perspective. And that's all by design because we want to provide that flexibility and, um, from both the service and the technology standpoint. Thank you, Sam. James, anything that you can share about the customers that use subscriptions or the uh, simplifications or improvements to customer experience that uh, you've observed from your experience with Stripe? Yeah, ab absolutely. Look, I think I would say most forward thinking travel companies are asking themselves, you know, what's my Amazon Prime, right? What is that subscription offering that I could get into market that would, you know, just reduce friction for people to come again and again, but also give a sense of belonging and, and nudge people to, to, to choose me over the competition. And I think we've heard two, two great examples today. Now, subscriptions have had pretty low penetration in travel and i think we've always told ourselves well, we have loyalty programs anyway uh, like the big hotel programs and perhaps travels a relatively infrequent purchase so it's not like shopping in a grocery store where i'm there every week maybe I only take one or two trips a year but i, I hope that mindset is shifting now that you know it, yeah i would recommend to every travel business pilots of subscription program as quick as as quick as they can because actually you'd be really surprised that a number of small benefits complemented with probably like an elevated traveler experience you know you've got to make them feel a little bit special it's not hard to do and it can yield huge results that frankly you probably would have spent on you know OTA commissions, travel agency commissions anyway. So you know you've got that kind of money to give away for people who choose you again and again. Um, We've recently supported one of the big hotel chains to launch Accor Plus um, initially in, in the Asia Pacific region. And for you know a small amount each year, you get a mix of instant and ongoing benefits. You know, you can get a free night, you get uh, you always get a discount on your room, you get a discount on food and drink, which let's face it, is higher margin, and people will probably end up kind of maybe eating the hotel and they wouldn't have done anyway. But they also nudge in this element of of status and this idea that actually you know, hey, this, this, this brand now will really recognize me. They'll, 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 they'll take better care of me and I'll have better stays. And that's important to me when I'm with my family or when I'm with business colleagues or clients. And, and so it's, it's a really smart move, I think, towards first getting that repeat purchase, but then getting that ongoing share of wallet. Because why would I pick the hotel down the road when I've already committed spend to this, this brand here? I'm not saying it's easy, you know, not not every segment wants this, but I think there's enough semi-frequent, frequent travelers that, that it is worth applying to some of your travel segments. I'd also say you need to find a way to make it sit alongside any core loyalty programs. I don't think you're going to be seeing people buying their way to platinum status because I think you do genuinely need a sense of earning that. But there's lots of perks, there's lots of benefits I think you can give. But the, but the key message really actually is, is around marketing. So step back from subscriptions. We've talked about that a lot. I think, you know, when someone has stayed with you, just make sure your tech is and your marketing team are, are, are jumping into gear around tailored email marketing, around when they traveled, why they traveled, how they travel. Have you learned those experiences? And I always say as a foundation, can they book exactly the same experience with you again in one or two clicks? You know, the same location, maybe same price point, same credit card. And if you can't, well, you've probably missed a really basic reason for repeat visits you know that people do return to the same hotel if it's near a client if it's near their office people do take flights at similar times of day people do park at the same airport so i think there's a really basic um kind of element of of personalization we're, we're missing and that's absolutely true in payments you know one of the things we see on, on the stripe network we see millions of transactions every hour we see 90 we've seen 90 percent of the credit cards we see before. So that's great because actually if a traveler has turned up again, we've got a, a new product called Stripe Link where we remember them and with a simple code, you're straight back in the system with all the details of how you like to pay, all of your delivery addresses and all that kind of stuff. So we can help every company feel like its customers are repeat customers. And we do this with platforms like Shopify and, and other big marketplaces outside the industry. And it's really exciting to be able to bring that to travel where I know 
not everyone has the resources to obsess about loyalty, customer experience, marketing every day. But if we can borrow, you know, really simple off the shelf tech that some of these big marketplaces are using, you know, why wouldn't we reduce the friction for our guests, create that sense of belonging, belonging and giving them you know, nudges to repeat, repeat book with us again and again. 